Hi, my name is Cliff Hastings and welcome to My Basement, as well as this presentation is an overview of Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition and using it both on the desktop and on the cloud. Uh, so again, my name is Cliff. Let me share my screen real quick. Today's uh, presentation will be a co-presentation between myself and my co-author of the book, Hands on Start to Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, uh, Kelvin Michaud. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how to use Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, and then Kelvin will give you a lot more of the details, uh, some of the intricacies of using it uh, separate than just the, the very basics. So let's click on a new notebook. Now you can use Notebook Edition in either the cloud or the desktop. Again, I'm using it in the cloud for use on a Chromebook or iPad or, or whatever, um, but I can usually use the desktop version on my laptop uh, as well. So either one is perfectly fine with the software, you get both. Now in Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, um, one of the, the great attributes is this is a notebook. So you can save this document, you can intermingle text and calculations and graphics. So I'm gonna call this my first presentation. Uh, I can make then a section cell, we'll call this working with numbers, and we're ready to go. So you'll notice this equal sign with this orange box around it. This is the compute uh, uh, input. We're ready to compute something. I don't need to type anything complex. I can just type whatever it is I'm doing, hit the enter key at the end, and I get my results. Uh, if I want to say find three-fourths as a decimal, we can do that too. I don't need to know any sort of language. I just type what I think. What happens is then um, uh, this uh, Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition is sending my calculation to the Wolfram servers. It is taking my input, trying to figure out then a Wolfram language equivalent of that, and then so it can calculate it and provide me that result. Uh, so if I say, what is 80% of 80%? Again, I don't need to know any language. I just type what I think, and then it provides me that uh, final result. We can do things like, what is the square root of 256? That should give me a result of 16. So I typed the word square root of 256, or I can also use a special character's keyboard where I can just click and type uh, what it is that I'm interested in finding as well. Uh, so if I do, uh, up here, click on square root and 25, hit enter, then I should get the result of five, which I do. So there's some nice characters to point and click uh, in this thing also. Uh, let's say I want to find, uh, I wanna ask this a question. So I'll say, is 555 a prime number? So in this case, I won't get an answer of a number, I'll get an answer of true or false. And in this case, the answer is false. Or if I say, show me the 43rd prime number, then Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition will get that and return that for me. Or I can even find a list and say, find me the list of the first 50 uh, prime numbers, and it should give me that list. Now, if you've used Wolfram Alpha before, a lot of what I'm doing so far, you can do in Wolfram Alpha, um, but there's a couple of really nice attributes to the software. One, again, I'm making a document or a notebook that I can save and refer back to, or I can make this a class lecture or a quiz or a test and provide this to the students as well. Uh, number two, uh, in Wolfram Alpha, you can do single step uh, calculations, but in Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, you can actually do multi-step calculations. So if I say total that, this means take the previous output, find the sum or the total, and, and give me that uh, result. Uh, so that's really nice to be able to do multiple step things and then we'll have Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition remember previous outputs that you can refer to and do calculations with as well. Uh, if I do something like, uh, let's do the absolute, oh, I'm in all caps, that's fine, it doesn't really matter. I'll just keep it to show you. Uh, I can use the caps lock if I want, it does the same thing. So here's the absolute value of negative five, or I can use the keyboard um, elements to find an absolute value. So I'll say, what's the absolute value of negative five plus five, and I should get a result of 10. <clears throat> Uh, let's do another new section. So let's start with, um, uh, let's see, let's do, how about some variables? So I'll just say, I'll just type variables here and I'll say, um, if A is three, 
or sorry, if a equals three, what is three a plus five? And that answer should be 14, which it is. But now, because I can do multiple steps in Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, it remembers what a is. So if I say, what's a minus uh, four, I should get an answer of negative one. If I don't want to remember what a is any longer, I can just clear the value of a, it is now gone. And I can do something like uh, the quadratic formula where I say solve a um, x squared plus b x plus c equals zero for x. And now that a is no longer remembered and I get that back as the quadratic uh, results. Uh, let's do another uh, solve. Uh, let's do solve of three x plus five y equals 15 and x equals three. So what is that? Well, x is three obviously and y is six fifths. Now, a neat thing for this is, what if I wanna see the steps of this calculation? Uh, I can click on step-by-step -step solution and then it's gonna walk me through the steps of finding this uh, calculation. So step one, solve for y. So five y plus nine equals 15. I wanna show the next step and it says isolate the terms with y to the left hand side. We'll show the next step again and I subtract nine from both sides as part of that step, uh, et cetera. So I can walk through all the steps or each step uh, piece by piece and it'll teach me how then to do this calculation to get to a final answer of y equals six fifths. So again, another really nice attribute of Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, the show steps for calculations uh, helps immensely with the teaching in both the classroom setting, as well as just me for a hobbyist who likes to play around and plunk and learn math. Uh, it's gonna help teach me that, not just find me the answers as well. Let's find, let's take a look at uh, some graphics. Let's say, let's take a look at negative five and three on a number line. And actually I'm gonna make a new section. So we call this uh, graphics. And we'll see this uh, number line plot that it gave me. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's see, how about graph um, of, two, three. So we can see a single point on a, on, a, on a graphic, or we can actually visualize, or you can call it graph or plot or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to take a look at a few points. So zero, zero, one, two, uh, two, five, and how about three, nine to finish this. So we can visualize those points uh, on a, a set of axes. Uh, so anyway, nice and easy working with graphics. We can uh, do something a little more complex like, like uh, functions. So we can say, you know, visualize sine of x over x and it'll immediately do that for us. Just like if you've had experience with Mathematica, it would in Mathematica or Wolfram Alpha. But again, we are being able to create and utilize all this stuff in a notebook interface so we can save it. Uh, for future calculations. And then you'll also notice this nice little suggestions bar at the bottom. So if you wanna say, ooh, I wanna add filling to this thing, how do I do it? Just click add fill. It'll do that for you and it'll teach you how to do that uh, as part of Wolfram language uh, as well. Last thing real quick is just taking a look at working with money. So if I say $5 minus $2.52, that's a very simple calculation to do, and we get that uh, result. But it gave me back in cents. Maybe I want to convert to actual dollars instead. So again, I can use that toolbar to convert it, and I get a result of $2.48. So working with uh, units is very simple, to and wolf from Alpha Notebook Edition. So overall, I just wanted to show I didn't show a lot of power, a lot of complexity, just a lot of easy examples to hopefully convince you and show you what a great piece of software Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition is uh, for the high school and junior college and even uh, things like college algebra at the university level, um, but also then for hobbyists and people just like me that likes to play with math and learn math, um, but may, may not be a programming expert either. So let me go ahead and now hand this over to Kelvin. He'll walk you through some other things in Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, and I appreciate you joining me. Hi, my name is Kelvin Michel, 
As Cliff mentioned, I'm the co-author of the Hands on Start 2 Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition book. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the additional functionality to do a series of calculations and to do that really easily. And then I'm going to talk about uh, sharing projects and how to run a class with Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition. So let me share my screen here. Okay, so we just saw Cliff do a first series of calculations and he did that within a browser. Uh, Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition can also be installed locally. Uh, one thing that is nice about a local installation and something that I'm gonna use here today is uh, if you go to New and Presenter Notebook, that gives you a nice slideshow mode where you can uh, step through content and you can do live calculations, but it's really nice for lecture formats. So keep in mind as I scroll through these slides, that's how I created this. Uh, and I'm gonna start the presentation here so you can see what this looks like. Let me toggle full screen. Okay, so uh, in that vein, um, Cliff and I have now both shown you Wolfram Alpha Notebook, Notebook Edition uh, in browser and locally. Uh, as a high level comment, notebooks and the functionality look and work exactly the same in either. So that makes it very nice if you're sharing projects or other people are picking up a project and maybe you're on Windows and they're on Mac or you're on a Chromebook and they're on a Windows machine. Um, a notebook is a notebook. So that's very nice. I think oftentimes in academia, maybe every student in a class is issued a Chromebook. So uh, maybe they all have the same hardware anyway, but in a bring your own device scenario or in a case where you're just not sure what kind of device uh, they might be using, it's really nice to just know that there's nothing extra to remember there. Next thing I wanna cover uh, is again, little tips on creating a series of calculations. Um, I'll run one of these in the local uh, Wolfram Alpha Notebook edition where this is very, as I said, similar to the look and feel for uh, how, you know, how Cliff was creating calculations and how these things look in browser. And I'm gonna click over to uh, just to do a compare contrast. So one thing though, that's nice to create a series of calculations is if you do a calculation and you wanna reference the last result. So here we've done an integral and maybe we wanna graph that. You can literally use the term that or result to reference the previous result. So when I say graph that, then I get exactly the graph that, that I intended to get there, which is pretty nice. The other thing is there's a button here called related computations. And so related to this integral, uh, this is a nice series of suggestions for things that the software does really well. I mean, certainly you can try things and uh, uh, the way to state calculations in everyday English encourages you to try things. But in this case, it just gives you a list of helpful things. Like if I wanna do uh, a plot of the function and the integral, when I click that button, a new input cell is created here, a new calculation, as well as a new result. Or if I click something like limit at x equals zero, again, another calculation is started and another result is displayed. So as I click that, it just, again, builds on the series of calculations and it does it really quick and really easily, which is nice. Next thing I wanna talk about is special characters. So uh, you can state calculations in everyday English, but there are cases where you might wanna mirror a textbook with a integral symbol or Greek characters or infinity. Um, you can enter any of these characters with this palette here at the top right called enter special characters. When you click that, it brings up this uh, system of buttons here and you just click on these to insert them in a calculation. So that's how I'm doing all of these, uh, all these three calculations. The integral comes out just the same as above. The limit uh, is returned and calculated, uh, you know, with infinity and with Greek characters, or we can do pi to a thousand digits. And instead of writing out pi in, in everyday English, maybe capital PI, uh, then we can just use the symbol there. So that's very nice as well to mirror a textbook. Next, I wanna elaborate on step-by-step -step solutions a little bit. So uh, if you start with a calculation like 
solving an equation uh, uh, related, uh, not related, similar to the related calculations, there is a step-by-step -step solution button that you can click on if there's step-by-step -step solutions built in. Just like related calculations, that makes a new calculation with, instead of just the results, it gives you all the step-by-step -step solutions. And you can either toggle through those one at a time or show all the steps. Um, and so if you want to quiz yourself, the one at a time is nice. If you just want to check a result, the show all steps is nice. But I think in general, this is a nice way to figure out if you're working on a problem set, did you make a arithmetic error at the end or did you make a mistake at the beginning and you really need to go back and read the chapter over again and, and, and make sure that you're clear on the concepts. Uh, but in a case where you're working individually, maybe uh, it's outside of class time or it's at two in the morning, having this real-time feedback is, is very, very handy. The step-by-step -step solutions, though, uh, spans all common math topics. So that can be uh, 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 pre-college, you know, K-12 topics, uh, mostly high school topics, but it, it can also be undergraduate topics, you know, things like calculus. Um, the other nice thing, too, is if you do something like show steps of an integral, uh, the integral or the steps are explained and it mirrors a very common, you know, a typical common textbook explanation. So if the solution involves U substitution or the chain rule or something like that, the steps go through and, and explain it, uh, you know, it, with that, that wording and with that methodology in mind. I'll do one last one here where we do a derivative and it's the same workflow where it goes through the steps, goes through hints. You can look at them one at a time or you can see them all. So as students are uh, working through this in, you know, maybe an algebra class, they know what to expect when they get to an Algebra 2 class or a Calculus class or something like that, and it can help them throughout their academic career. Last thing on this slide that I want to talk about is graphics and animations. So you can do uh, all sorts of graphics like graph 3x plus 5 or graph 3x plus 10, but if you want to do something like graph 3x plus b, varying b from minus five to five. So instead of one specific graph, I want to look at the overall concept here. I want to look at what happens when I change B and what effect does that have on the graph. When you use that term varying, uh, by default, there are sliders then that are drawn. And so as I move B uh, into the negatives, and I've got the, I've got the size uh, very blown up here for the sake of the presentation today, but uh, as I move B here, you can see that uh, the, you know, I can see the y-intercept here and I can see how that uh, relates to the original equation or I can zoom in or zoom out with the, um, you know, the range of the domain of the plot. So in general though, this is a nice way instead of looking at one plot or, you know, recalculating plots a bunch of times, this is a good way to look at overall concepts and that term varying uh, is a very flexible thing that you can use throughout mathematics to do these kind of examples that have animations and, and mouse-driven sliders. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, sharing courseware or sharing a finished project. Um, in Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition, we call that publishing a notebook. So if you want to share a project where people can immediately read it and see it, you can publish a notebook and that creates a second URL that anyone can look at and anyone can read through these examples. So if I take this, um, this example that I was working on here, if I click the publish drop down menu, I can give it a name, I can password protect it. But when I click publish, I get a second URL. And then this is a, uh, you know, a preview slide where everybody can see what I'm doing if they want to read this idea that I've outlined, you know, anyone in the world can read this, this notebook and, and take a look. I just need to post this somewhere or send them the URL. Now in a class setting, if you want the students to make their own notes, so maybe you're sharing a lecture and you want them to take notes at the same time, or you're sharing an assignment where you want them to adapt a calculation, but the bulk of the document is their work, uh, students can either click on make your own copy or download, 
And then that makes a second copy where, you know, if 30, 30 students click on that, uh, they each get their own copy. They're, they're each working in their own copy of the document. You know, they're not affecting the author's copy. So it's really good for assignments and it's really good for, you know, lectures where students need to jump off and, and use that as a jumping off point, basically. All right, I want to wrap up here with a little bit on professional development and implementation. Uh, there are several training resources that I've linked here, and we'll have this notebook posted somewhere. Uh, but the main one that Cliff and I have been putting a lot of effort in is the Hands-On Start to Wolfram Alpha Notebook Edition book. So this is just now wrapped up, just now being released. Uh, it's been a big project for both of us. Um, this is useful for a couple of reasons. Um, first is, it can just be a really good source of tutorials. Um, if you are new to the software and you need tutorials, works great. If your students are new to it and you wanna pick out a couple uh, tutorials and have them work through it, or maybe you want to adopt it as the textbook for your class, um, it's really nice for that. We've gone through pretty quickly here how to make notebooks and make calculations. You know, the book has a much more deliberate uh, structure where things are explained in a lot more detail a lot of the variations are explained in a lot more detail. Um, it just it, it just uh, slows down a little bit and, and explains all the variations or why you would want to do some of these things in the first place. Um, the second part of the book is examples and they're broken down uh, by course. So if you're teaching a particular class, you've got a really good source for ready-made examples where if you're in an algebra class and you're teaching expanding polynomials or something like that, you can just grab the examples immediately and then maybe use them verbatim. Maybe swap in the uh, equations or examples from your lesson plan. Maybe swap in the equations from your textbook, but it acts as a really good jumping off point uh, if you need ready-made examples. Uh, and again, if you're going to use them verbatim, great. If you're going to adapt them, great. Uh, they're useful in either case. Um, and while we're talking about this book, I'll just show a couple uh, screenshots of the book. You're looking at a PDF copy that it'll, it'll look the same in print uh, or in the Kindle store. Um, this first chapter, um, the book starts with a couple sample projects. So before we get into teaching the software itself, we outline you know, what's possible after you understand the software. So something like having a summer job and figuring out how much money you'd save over the summer that involves some data, you know, what is the minimum wage in a certain state? It involves dates, you know, how many weekdays are there in the summer? It involves a bit of algebra, some graphing. Maybe we want to resolve this based on some different uh, starting point conditions. Uh, but it's just a good way to figure out, you know, what would a project in this software look like? Second chapter goes through and uh, shows how to create quizzes and tests especially if they're going to be shared in print form. So if you want to do something like uh, create auto numbered questions with nicely typeset formulas, you know, we explain that in a lot more detail uh, in that chapter as well. And then I'll skip ahead to chapter 12. So this is one of the chapters where if you're teaching algebra, this gives you a bunch of ready-made examples for algebra, uh, things like expanding polynomials, factoring polynomials, uh, showing the steps, building up a series of calculations, um, you know, different algebraic manipulations, things like graph that where x grows from minus 10 to 10. So these are all just very good little tips that you can grab. They're things that are, will immediately work and things that the software is immediately good at, uh, but it saves you the process of experimenting or building your own lesson plans necessarily. You can use your existing lesson plans and then just grab you know, maybe a half a dozen calculations or a dozen calculations, you know, throughout the course of the algebra uh, term or the algebra semester, um, you know, you can grab as you need, basically. Okay, so we'll post this notebook. I won't go through the rest of this in too much detail, but we've got uh, documentation. We've got training videos. Uh, so this is a video where Cliff goes through and builds a first notebook, uh, but you can watch it on demand. So either that's useful for instructors or it's great for students. We've got how-tos that you can read through how to do things uh, like make a slideshow or something like that. 
we've got some very drilled in sample courseware. So maybe some ideas on how do you lay out a lecture? How do you lay out a student project? How could that look or what, what's a good format to follow for that? We're also trying to do as much customized training as possible. So if you're at a school and all the instructors are brand new to the software, you know, we're, we're trying to do as much support as we can where maybe you dedicate an hour and everyone builds their own first lesson plan. You get tips from us, training from us, Q&A from us. Uh, we're trying to do as much of that as possible. So if any or all of that interests you, you know, drop us a line, uh, but I'll, I will wrap there and uh, thanks for attending today. So it seems like we've kept up with the questions uh, in the chat pod so far, and uh, we've run a little bit long. So uh, for more Q&A and for more questions, we'll put Cliff's uh, email in the chat pod uh, and probably mine as well. And just drop us a line, email us. We can talk offline if you have more questions. Uh, but thanks again for attending.